So this lesson is also going to be uh, kind of short. So what we're focusing on next is macro minerals. Uh, yeah, I think I'll only do the macro minerals in this um, lesson. So again, any minerals that animals need in large quantities is your macro minerals. So we're going to look at a couple of them. The first thing that all animals need in bulk is calcium. So just remember the symbol CA, capital C, small a, to symbolize calcium. And you guys have to know a source, a function, and what deficiency is caused when these animals do not get enough of these micro minerals. So first of all, a good source of calcium is any green plants. So your photosynthesizing plants, they've got calcium usually. So the function of calcium is for strong bones, so for the skeleton, strong teeth, for muscles, for muscle building, and also for good heart health. Then obviously your deficiency, if animals do not get enough calcium in, shame, the, the first thing that can happen is what they call rickets. So this sheep is an example. Uh, we just said it helps for strong teeth. So again, if it doesn't have enough calcium in, uh, animals can have skew um, or bad, um, weak and you know, weak teeth that can easily break. So shame, this one doesn't have enough teeth to actually eat his feed and some of the teeth are a bit skew. Then as well as um, the rickets itself refers to the legs that sometimes are a little bit brittle. So they, they, they kind of become bow-legged. The legs go to one side. So as well, the legs are kind of bent in a strange way. They can't really stand correctly on their hooves. And also with these um, two legs, you can see it kind of buckles underneath the weight of the, of the sheep. So that's a ricket. Usually it affects the bone structure of the animal. Then sometimes as well, milk fever can occur, like this cow, it's laying on, um, well, it can't move. So usually the milk fever affects um, the muscles and also the nervous system. And it's called milk fever because we need calcium in milk, and these, uh, these cows, in this case, do not have enough calcium in their milk. And usually the udder becomes swollen and, and very, very tender, and they get physical fever, almost like flu, flu-like symptoms, from the fact that they don't have enough calcium. So that's why it's called milk fever. They also have a high temperature. The second mineral we're going to look at is phosphorus. So P remembers the symbol for phosphorus. A good source of this would be milk, any grain feed for the animal, and fish meal. Uh, you guys will actually see that fish meal is actually the answer most of the time for most of these um, elements. So those are three nice sources of phosphorus. The function of it is also a strong skeleton, healthy teeth, to build proteins and also ATP. ATP, again, adenosine triphosphate, is the energy molecule that our bodies create. So all living organisms have ATP to give them energy. So again, if you have a phosphorus deficiency, the animal won't really have any energy to do much. So in this picture, we see a cow eating a piece of bone, like literal skeleton bones. And in this picture, we see an, a cattle in uh, India eating some rubbish. So meaning what's happening now is what they call pica. So pica, think P for phosphorus, P and P. Pica occurs when these animals don't have enough phosphorus in, and then they literally start to eat anything. So things like rubbish bags, plastic bags, uh, bones, all in the attempt to get more phosphorus into their bodies. So that is called pica. Pica is when they eat yeah, literally anything to try and supplement themselves with phosphorus. They love asking this question. Then also another deficiency is rickets. We just covered also if there's a um, calcium shortage, same thing for phosphorus shortage, of course, rickets. And something called osteomalacia. So technically those two, rickets and osteomalacia, are the same thing. But rick rickets usually happens in young animals, whereas osteomalacia, also brittle bones and so on, happens in your older animals. So this usually happens when an uh, adult cow all of a sudden gets a uh, phosphorus deficiency. Then we move on to magnesium, Mg. And a good source of magnesium is bran feeds, yeast, cottonseed, and clover. Again, with the sources, uh, I'd say memorize maybe one or two of them. They rarely ask for more than two. Then some functions of magnesium is also for good bone health good muscle movement. So if you have magnesium, it's actually very important for your muscles. So without magnesium, you can't actually move your muscles. Then thirdly, for a good pH balance in the body. So with a deficiency, hence the pictures of the cow lying on his side and looking like it can't really move or it's spasming. So what's happening to this cow is what's called tetany. 
So that is when the animal um, experiences muscle contractions. So they struggle literally to move their muscles. They have almost no control over their muscles because they can't use their nervous system. And like we just said, with magnesium, it's there for muscle movement. So no magnesium, no muscle movement. So they constrict and this cow won't be able to stand up for a long while until it actually has absorbed or eaten magnesium. Then also the second thing is hypomagnesemia. So hypo means little and magnesemia sounds like magnesium. So basically what it means is little magnesium. They're getting in less than they need to, so that's called hypomagnesemia. Then fourthly, uh, we have sodium and chlorine, kind of putting that, those two together because sodium chloride is table salt. So good sources of that is, well, table salt you can give the animal, and also fish meals. So mainly most um, fish feed, or what is that, ocean or marine organisms, actually the right word, they have a lot of salt in it. Any organisms living in the ocean have a lot of salt, so that's a good source of it. So usually what they give animals is the fish meal. So fish meal itself is like fish skeletons ground up to make it like a fine powder. So that becomes fish meal. And a good way of actually giving it to the animals is like the picture shows us a nice big salt lick. So that's a nice way of actually supplementing sodium chlor chloride for animals. So the function of uh, sodium and chlorine, both of them is, is acts, acts as a hunger suppressant, so the animals become less hungry, so that usually they eat a little bit less than say, an animal that doesn't get in salt. Then it's also important for osmosis, and it also forms part of the gastric juices. So think of chlorine, it forms part of HCl, hydrochloric acid, and that is one of the gastric juices we find in our stomachs and also in animal stomachs. So that's important for the gastric juice. Then the deficiency is known as alkalosis. So alkalosis almost sounds like alkaline, alkalinity, that's exactly it. So an animal with alkalosis, its body or its pH levels in its blood is really, really alkaline or basic. So again, this is actually bad. If the body becomes too basic or acidic, it means that most enzymes can't react or act the way they're supposed to in the body. Uh, metabolism is affected, so so many other bad things can happen from alkalosis. Fifthly, potassium, the element is K, or the, the symbol is K. So sources of potassium, also fish meal and lucerne hay. So the function of your potassium is it helps with water metabolism, so meaning metabolism in the body where water is required, and then also osmotic pressure. So osmotic pressure is inside the cells of Oh, yeah, all the cells inside the body of the animal. So then the deficiency, the main deficiency is muscle weakness. So again, potassium along with your sodium is needed for the movement of muscle and the functioning, you know, generally the functioning of the muscle. So again, if there's no potassium, the animal usually feels fatigued and doesn't have enough energy to move, physically can't move their muscles. Okay, and then the rest of the picture just shows some extra information, like they've got poor coordination, wobbly legs, they struggle to move, low blood pressure. Also, pica, by the way, can also occur if they don't have enough potassium, so they start to eat bones and other strange things. And they also usually have a, a lack of appetite, which is also bad. Then the sixth one is sulfur. Uh, the source here is amino acids. That's the only way they can get the sulfur in and specifically forms part of the amino acid cysteine and methionine. Uh, those two are just extra information, but just remember you get sulfur from amino acids, meaning the animal will have to eat protein to get in these amino acids. So then the function is to build proteins. You need amino acids. They're the building blocks of proteins. And again, which makes sense, if there's a deficiency of these amino acids or the sulfur, you won't have any muscle. So there will be a lack of muscle. As we see in the picture here, the, the second sheep is not so um, bad. Um, this does have some muscle, but it's starting to lose some of its wool. And then the first sheep on the left side, it, you can see, has muscle dystrophy. So muscle dystrophy is when the muscle has been deteriorated. There's almost no muscle left. It looks very, very skinny. And the hair, or in this case, the wool has actually most of it fallen off. So this is definitely a sick animal. So yeah, the sulfur is important for building protein and having a healthy um, animal. 
Okay, sorry, just going to stop here for the moment and then the next lesson will go on with micro minerals.